Otherwise, three points for a try and two points for conversion. Great Brit Mike Stevenson, hooker from Dewsbury. And a nice break indeed with Stephen Nash coming up. Very good turn inside Charlton. Eskers is a chance if Sullivan in. Sullivan might be in for a try. The French are cheering him and Sullivan's over. Nichols looking inside to Charlton. 25 yard line on the right. Clawson. Lockwood. Still moving in Great Britain well. Nichols trying to find the opening. Support in is in. There's Phil Lowe. He's in for a try. Phil Lowe. Lockwood and using low. Oh, this is a chance for uh, Phil Lowe to give it to Akin. Oh, beautiful pass. Beautiful try to Atkinson. A lot of Australians, 200 odd in that crowd across there, come specially for the World Cup. And there's a break here. There's trouble here as Bob McCarthy can run. And outside him is Bobby Fulton, and he's in for a try. Fulton to make the scores equal 17 17. Fourth tackle coming up. Halfway line on the left. Stevenson. Oh, this is a bit of a move, a good chase now. Two Wheatonesians together, if it bounces right, it's a try! It's a try, two Wheatonese men! Nichols made the break and O'Neill got it! What a great moment for the Wheatonese boys! Well done, George Nichols. It was the fourth tackle coming up. It's sent enough to kick and young Dennis O'Neill got into it. Watch this one again. See the referee had pushed the indication of four tackles. And he got out of four players remarkably, did Dickles. And this was the vital moment when he put the kick in. And in true typical style that just a kneel alone can do. And it was a nice bounce. And he went behind the post effectively. <laughs> Mick Stevenson had a good game in the loose. Four tackle coming up. Oh, a good move indeed. Oh, and it's a try for Stevenson. A try for Stevenson on the fourth tackle. Beautiful football. Well, that's a great fight back by Great Britain. Nash in it, low in it, and then Stevenson, and he banged it down. Thought he was a crown flap, I'm quite sure. Vital kick for Clausen. It's a goal! Scrum down. Well, you can have it keener and more tense, and the excitement is really around this stadium, even though the French team are not playing. Great, and <laughs> Nash did. And I say, he's learning well, is that lap? And there goes the whistle for time! with a sensational victory in this first of Great Britain's World Cup effort here in Perpignan. 27 points to Great Britain, 21 to Australia. And they were not, they being Great Britain, were not given an awful lot of chances, but they've come back in a brilliant style and so well deserved this success, playing good football, eventually taking the chances and very, very worthy winners indeed, which puts them really in line for a place in the World Cup in Lyon on November 11th. And welcome to Lyon for the grand final of the World Cup. Great Britain who have won all their three matches playing against Australia. Great Britain in white, Australia in the, their usual green and gold. And it's, uh, it's almost even to this match. There's a lot of talk in Leon this morning who they think is going to win, but the Australian have got Langdon full back, Grant in a number two jersey for playing on the left wing, Harris, Stalin, and Brannigan, who will be on the right wing. It's quite a strong side. There was some doubt about Bobby Fulton ex Warrington, but uh, he was declared fit. And the Great Britain side 
uh, is, uh, I would think, just about at full strength. John Holmes is at standoff. His father arrived this morning. Fullback Charlton, Sullivan, Hesketh, Walsh, and Atkinson. Nash at Scrum Half had a great World Cup series. James Holmes and the front three, Clawson, Prop, Fieldside, Stevenson, Jeans, Lowe, he calls him Love there. <laughs> well, maybe after if they win. Lockwood and Nichols. And it's Australia having won the toss. Nash to kick off. And so Great Britain are left to right in the final of this World Cup. Ah, well, well. It's quite obvious the referee is wanting to uh, leave well alone, if that's the right phrase. The forwards are beginning to go a bit strong. O'Neill. O'Neill's, O'Neill's in, O'Neill's in for a try. O'Neill's in for a try. Put it back for Langlands to kick. No, it's running away from Charlton. He's had an, about another 10 yards added on to him. Up past one. Sound. And the ball's come off for a nice inside to Beatson. And Mark Harris, just a great tackle. A great tackle by George Nichols. Don't want to try before half time. They'll find it difficult. The fourth tackle coming up. Sullivan. Sullivan. Ah! Oh! Can he go, Sullivan? Can he go? I think Sullivan will go after him to the field. I don't think anybody's going to catch him. I don't think anybody's going to catch him. Everybody's saying go, go, go. And he goes for a try to Sullivan. What a tremendous try. And I, he was tired after that. But it's a big, strong forward like O'Neill. And O'Reilly that's causing the trouble. Oh, a good run indeed by Ward. Beats him in for a try. Beats him must be in for a try. Oh, boy, nearly knocked the ball forward. Going to try to barge in on his own. Bobby Fulton going in from the short distance. The big heavy forward. O'Reilly, I don't know how many tackles these have been, but... I think the referee's probably lost count. And the Langlands again. And Flanagan, Flanagan out. The position is right. John Atkinson obstructed. The position is right for some sort of a move. Can Great Britain do this? Still low. Sullivan managed to take it well. Still running Sullivan. This should, this should be a chance. Inside, it's, it's in the try. Stevenson! Well, great play by Sullivan here. He ran right across. Kept going, came inside. And he looked as if he had it, the defence beaten on his own. And then he gave it. A long one to Lockwood, and he was still there looking, and Lockwood cleverly turned inside, and the man who follows everything up in brilliant style, Stevenson, scores that he has done on this World Cup series, and it's on this goal kick now to make it a draw, and if it's a draw at the end of the 40 minutes, then it's 10 minutes each way, and if it's then a draw, it's Great Britain's Cup. But they've got to get level now. It's 10 points to 8. Australia, 10. Great Britain, 8. Clawson to kick. Number 8. It's to go! The score, 10-10, with one minute to go. 10 points to Great Britain, 10 to Australia. And with the best score in average, if 10-10, it will be Great Britain's trophy. There's, and on the field is the French touch judge. French touch judge going on with the Australian 
trying on and Great Britain have won the World Cup by holding on 10 points all because of the better scoring average in this World Cup. And there's the Great Britain captain with the Australians having gone in completely. Nobody out here. Um, Clive Sullivan. There's the Coupe de Monde as a delighted Paul Charlton shows it and up they're going to get Sullivan on the back and if they've got strength I don't know whether they've got strength to do a lap of honour It's been a long time since we looked so galvanised well, I'll say this, this is something that the British Rugby League fans do so well and the officials, we have the 1972 side here, 50 years to the day since they won the World Cup. I say that, Leon, because you go around to all the grounds and clubs and you see moments in history still recorded on the walls. I was at Dewsbury today and I go into the, the inner office and there's the match program from the 1929 Challenge Cup final at Wembley. There. They remember those great times. And, you know, you go to Warrington and on the wall underneath the grandstand there, there's the story of the club, the history of the club. The statue of Brian Bevan, the Wizard of Oz outside the ground. St Helens, they have images on the walls of great moments at the club. I love that. I, I love the respect for history that, that you and your fans have. For the, for the history of clubs? Yeah, I think it's, it's what the players deserve, and I think some of our best rugby years, success-wise, success were 50, 60, 70 years ago, and we always remember those players of the past, as you right, so rightly say. And tonight, Mike Stevenson, the last team to win the World Cup, was it? It's just a team. 72, 50 years, age will not weary them. Nine members of the team here. I spent some time in uh, Castleford yesterday. Back in the day when we had the Kangaroo Tours, Leon. Castleford, 1963, beat an Australian side that had the likes of Raper, Irvine, Johns, Langlands. Castleford beat them 13-12. They remember those moments. And as, a, and as a rugby league fan growing up watching the games from a six, seven-year-old boy, then with the tours that you remember when the Kangaroos come over and they come, I remember I was, as a young boy, I was at eight or nine up, going to Bradford Northern and Mal Meninga came over with the Australian team. They were playing and I was the ball boy and I remember seeing the size of some yeah. of them. Yeah, I was a ball boy, yeah. Wow. And Mal Meninga and all those boys came, Ricky Stewart, back in maybe early 90s, late 80s. Yeah, 90. Yeah. 90. Yeah, yeah. With, and, uh, with Ricky. Yeah, yeah, so as a fan, and these are the players, these are the players that, that we want to watch and see and get close to and, and grow up and emulate. So it's fantastic to have all the big boys over here playing in the biggest competition in the world. So great men of our great sport. Lovely moment for them tonight to be remembered five decades on. So they went along to. Um, to Wakefield yesterday, Leon, and and you know, it's, it's a ground, a, a club that the great Wally Lewis came over and played for. 1983, he plays 10 games. I was told he his residence while he was here was above one of the pubs <laughs> in the area. He had, a, he, had a, he had a little room up above a pub. <laughs> the future immortal, old school. They reckon there was one night he was on the karaoke until after midnight with one or two lemonades <laughs> the next day came out and put in a man of the match performance yeah that wouldn't surprise me at all. i mean what you maybe don't realize Vossi, is these the players that play in the english clubs brett kenny people like that mal meninga who played at st helens the king wally lewis lula wise all the players that came over and played in the seasons over for the, for the english clubs are still talked about in such high regard nowadays even though to this day well, Wally Lewis, that's what I did learn through being at Wakefield. The day that Wally played his first game for Wakefield, playing his first game for Hull on the other side of the field, it's Peter Sterling. He played his first game as a club player against a team that included Wally Lewis. What a, what a showdown. What a showdown. Fans love that history as well. They love talking about the players that they saw on grace the, the biggest games of Wembley. That's when the Challenge Cup was so big back in the day. Players have come out of the Australians have come over and 
playing for teams. I'll tell you what I also learned today. I went to Batley.